Okay, so we're going to go ahead and um, go over this problem. So it says a rectangular prism is shown below. So what is the surface area of the rectangular prism? So what's important in this question? Gabby? Letting us know that it's a rectangular prism because we know we're dealing with a 3D shape. All right, what else is important? Surface area, because it's telling us what we're going to be finding. And then the last thing. All right, so what do we know about all the sides of this shape? What do we know about all the sides of the shape? And they're all different, okay? Um, what else do we know about the sides? They're all rectangles. They're all rectangles. What do we know about the opposite sides um, of rectangles? Okay. They're always the same. Always the same. So if this bottom line is eight, I know this top line is eight, right? So eight centimeters here. This bottom line is 20, I know the top line is 20. And then if the left side is four, I know the right, <laughs> the right side is gonna be four. All right, so also, what do I know about the top and the bottom of this shape? What do I know about the top and the bottom, Andrew? They're the exact same. Andrew, what do I know about the left and the right side? And what do I know about the front and the back? They're the same. So I only have to find the area of three rectangles, and then I can just multiply that information by two because we know that all the, the shapes are the same. Um, all right, so let's start with this front one. Oh, sorry. Um, what is the form to find the area of a rectangle? What formula do we use to find the area of a rectangle? The, or, um, Joe? Length times width. Length times width. All right, so for the first one, I'm going to do 4 times 20, which gives me what? 4 times 20. Allie? 8. And I'm going to multiply that by 2, which gives me what? Here. 160. Does everybody understand? Why I'm multiplying this by two? Is there anybody who doesn't understand? It's all good? Okay. All right, then next what I'm gonna do is four times eight. What does that give me? Andrew? And then Andrew, when I do 32 times two, what does that give me? And the last one is gonna be 20 times eight. What does that give me? And then I'm going to multiply 160 times 2. What is that going to give me? What's 16 times 2? All right, so what do we do with 160, 64, and 320? What do we do with those three? Sophia? 100. 100. All right, so then what should your answer be? Abby? C. C. Give me a thumbs up if you got C as the correct answer. If you did not get C as the correct answer, do you see where you well, went wrong? Well, Lindsay, please report to the office for checkout. Do you see where you went wrong if you did not get C as your answer? Yes, no. All right. Backside T and B, and then um, your first and last name. All right, go ahead and get out the note page that I gave you today.
your attention please. Track is canceled for today. Track is canceled for today. Thank you. Go ahead and um, get that copy down. Give me a thumbs up when you have it all All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this lesson. Um, we may or may not finish this, um, both of these lessons in math today. Um, so if we do not finish it, we'll just move it into, um, into science and push science back a little bit because we don't have a whole lot to do today. All right, so for your warm up today, it says plot points in your assigned quadrant and label them with their coordinates. I'm going to give each table a quadrant, and as a group, you guys are just going to pick two or three points, and you're going to plot them. Okay? Make sense? Any questions? All right. Addie's table, quadrant one. Kira, quadrant two. Juan, quadrant three. Gabby, quadrant four. Alex, quadrant one. Faith, quadrant two. Lily, quadrant three. Andrew, quadrant four. All right, so two or three quadrant or two or three points, and then um, just make sure you write them down. Or not you have. I'll give you like a minute and a half. All right, do I have a volunteer from a group that would like to come up and just put their, um, whatever you call it, coordinate plane up underneath the iPad? All right, someone from Gabby's group. Okay, um, where are your points though? Because I don't see them. I don't see them. 
Danny Gornett. Follow the trail. Okay. Good luck. Play one real quick. All right. Um, Abby, someone from your group. You guys have project four as well. I don't know if that's quite important. What's wrong with their points? What do you notice right away that's wrong with their points? Or not necessarily their points, but their coordinates. Elizabeth? That they're not underneath the um, the points where they plotted it, so you don't know which one's which. Uh, no, not necessarily that. Look at the actual numbers in their points. If they are quadrant, just kidding, that is my fault. I was totally thinking the wrong thing. Never mind. What do you notice about the X and the Y coordinates in their pairs? Lily? They're both positive. Both positive. All right, good job. Uh, all right. Hey, 
not in volunteer, so it's always coming up here. All right, Cam. Mark Watson, are you? getting our minds wrapped around body points understanding that let's go ahead and move into the next part of this lesson um, today with lesson 14 we are focusing on the distance from one point to the other all right and this doesn't seem like a hard thing but it's it's extremely hard if you have no boxes to to count like right now in this next grid you're, you're gonna notice we can count our boxes right but what happens when you don't have boxes to count so we're going to talk about that as well all right, so the first part, it says, write the coordinates for each point. So starting with A, A is here. Raise your hand and tell me. Well, first and foremost, let's label our quadrant so we know which one we're in. And then tell me my ordered pair for point A. It's my ordered pair for point A. Ramon? Um, four, three. So I go four to the right and I go three up. So it's four, three, okay? What about for B? So B is down here. Kira? Yes. Um, positive four, negative three. Okay, so am I going four to the right, four to the left? Four to the right. And then? Down three. Down three. All right, stopping real quick, what do you notice about these two points? What do you notice about these two points right here? Elizabeth? They're exactly the same, but uh, the three is negative and the C one, or the B one, sorry. Okay, so essentially we're looking at technically three and negative three are what? Starts with an O, we talked about this like last week. Ben, or, um, why do I want to call you Ben today? Y'all got like this, I don't know. Joe? Ordered pair. Nope. The three and the negative three. Andrew? Opposites. They are opposites. So what do we know about opposites, ladies and gentlemen? What do we know about the opposite? Based off of this and looking at, this is technically our zero. What do we know about this point and this point? Alex? The same they are the same distance away from zero. Okay? All right, let's go to point C. What are the order, or the, yeah, the order pair for point C? Um, Abby? Three, negative five? No. Nope. Yes, sorry. I can't count today. Um, so tell me how I get there. Go right three times and down five. Perfect. All right, what about D? What about D? What do we notice about D? Lily? Um, 
Okay, how do I get there? So going to the left four times and down three times, okay? And then the last one, point E. What do we notice about that, Alex? Or, I'm sorry, uh, what are the coordinates? The coordinates are negative five, three. Okay, and? You go to the left five times and go up two times. Perfect. All right, so now that we have our points, again, I'm gonna stop for a second. Look at B and C. What do you notice about the X coordinates there? What do you notice about those X coordinates for B and C? Gabby? They're the same. The X coordinates for B and C, or B and D, sorry. Uh, they're opposites. They are opposites as well. I think I said the wrong one, so that's my fault. All right, so let's slide over to number two. So it says answer these questions for each pair of points. How are coordinates the same and how are they different? How far away are they from the x or from the y-axis, um, so to the left or to the right? And how far away are they from the x-axis above or below? All right, so we kind of talked about this a little bit already, correct? So how are they the same? How are they the same? So for A and B, remember if we look over here, they have the same X, so um, their X coordinates are four. Okay, how are they different? How are they different? Callie? So, um, one is plus, Okay, how far away are they from the y-axis? So let's slide back over here. And this is our y. So how far away is A and how far away is B from, from this line? So all you have to do is what? All you have to do is what? Andrew? Count the squares. So I can go one, two, three, four. So from here it's one, two, three, four. From here it's one, two, three, four. All right, what happens though, stop. What happens though if you do not have squares or boxes or whatever to count? How else could we figure out how far away they are from the y-axis? Lily? You use the x-axis? Nope. What do you mean you use the x-axis? You mean you see um, how far away it is from the y-axis by looking at the x-axis and by writing it up and it's easier to see the Your answer is backwards. Why is her answer backwards? Or maybe she just said it in reverse order. Essentially, guys, look at your x coordinates. How far away are they from zero? So if I'm looking at these two points, how far away are they from zero? Then four. So if you're asking the distance from the y-axis, you're using the x coordinate. If you're asking the distance from the x-axis, you're using the y coordinate. Okay? So I think, is that what you were trying to say? Yeah. Okay, so sometimes you just gotta keep it simple, right? Yeah. Um, so essentially, the distance from the y coordinate or the y axis is what? Sophia? Four. All right, and then how far is it away from the x axis? So same thing. If I'm looking here, I'm going to use my y coordinates, right? Or um, if it gives you the boxes, you can count from the x-axis up to that point. So if we're counting, it's one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, if we don't have the boxes to count, we're looking at our y-coordinates. So what is our answer? Lily? Three.
Even though one of our coordinates is a negative, it's still three? Why? Why? So then what do we use there? Because I mean technically we're going from zero to three, zero to negative three, but we're not gonna say you go negative three down. We say you go three down. So what is that called? Should be it? Absolute value. Absolute value. All right, so now let's look at points B and D. So let's slide back over here. So we have B and we have D. All right, so how are they the same? So you're looking at four, negative three, and then D is negative four, negative three. So how are they the same? How are these two points the same? Abby? What's the same about them? So again, look at your coordinates. Look at your location. So B is here, D is here. What is the same? Here's your coordinate. Again, B is four, negative three. D is negative four, negative three. What is the same? Marianne, you wanna help her? I'm thinking that four is the same as negative four. Is four the same as negative four? That's the same? Okay. So, but you're you're on the right track. What else is the same looking at our coordinates? Negative three. All right, so our y coordinate for this one is the same, which is negative three, right? Everybody agree with that? All right, um, what's, how are they different? If you listen to Marion, he just kind of told us, how are they different? Soraya? Okay, so um, one is positive, one is negative. All right, how far are they from the y-axis? So this is my y, how far are they? And again, you can either count or you can use your coordinates. So take out C, don't look at that three. So how far away are they from the y-axis? Y'all? I need way more participation today. Kira? Four. So they're four away from, so y equals four, and then the x is what? How far are they away from the x? Andrew? Three. Third. So they're kind of the same as the first two, right? As no? All right, what about A and B? So now A and B are a little bit different. So this is A, and the coordinates are four, three, and this is D, and the coordinates are negative four, negative three. So what do you, what do you notice? So how are they the same? How are they the same? Gabby? Say that again. For both their x and the y, they have the same absolute value. Okay, so um, x and y, same, a, b. All right, how are they different? How are they different, Ramon? They're opposites. They're opposites, exactly. All right, so opposites. And then what do you notice about their coordinates again? So I wrote them for a reason. What do you notice about their coordinates? Like the location from Y and the location from X. What do you notice about them? Like how far away are they from Y? How far away is they from X? Oh. From M? They're the exact same distance away from X. And, and from the origin. Right, so I mean essentially they're the exact same distance, but just and completely different. They're essentially in like the, not the adjacent, um, they're the opposite. So your x is three away and your y is four away. 
So regardless of the three points that we talked about, or the three sets of points that we talked about, they're all the same distance from x and they're all the same distance from y. And you should notice that essentially a is the opposite of d, or d is the opposite of a. And how do we know that? How do we know that a is the opposite of d and d is the opposite of a? Lauren? Right, because this is negative 4 and that's a positive 4. What do we know about that? Bless you. What do we know about a negative 4 and a positive 4? Indira? What do we know about a negative 3 and a positive 3? Indira? They're opposites. All right, so let's move on to question number 3. It says point F has the same coordinates as point C, except its Y coordinate has the opposite sign. Okay, so let's go over here. Um, so point C is right here, and it's saying that it's, let me read it again, point F has the same coordinates as point C, except the Y coordinate has the opposite sign. So C, and I'm gonna write this down here so I can see it, is three, negative five. So what are the coordinates for our F coordinate? If it has the opposite, sign for the y. So what's the opposite of negative 5? Positive 5. Alright, so then f is technically, is it going to have the same y, or x, excuse me, it's going to have the same x coordinate. So what is my x coordinate? Andrew? Alright, and then um, Elizabeth just told us that we're going to have the opposite of negative 5, which is a positive 5. Okay, so 3a says plot point f on the coordinate plane and label it with its coordinates. So point f, we're going to go 1, 2, 3 to the right and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up. So this is f and this is going to be 3, 5. Does everybody agree and understand? So this is point c, that's point f. What do you notice about these two points? Allie? Their y is opposite. Their y coordinate is opposite. Yes, their y coordinate is opposite. What about the distance from the x coordinate, or the x axis? What do we notice? The distance from the x axis. So the distance from here. So from here to here and from here to here. What do we notice about both of those? Addie? It's the same distance. What about from the y axis? So from here, sorry, here to here, and here to here. Well, what do we notice about those? Caitlin, what do you notice? What do you notice from the y-axis to that point and the y-axis to this point? Right, yeah, they are the same distance. So both of them are three from the y-axis, and both of them are five from the x-axis. Um, so number three B says, possibly, um, how far away are F and C from the x-axis? Well, we just talked about this, right? So how far are they away from the x-axis? Five. Five. All right, how, um, what is the distance from F to C? So all the way from F to C. So what is the distance from this point all the way down to this point? Mara? Ten. Ten, how did you figure that out? I counted the squares. Okay, so you can count the squares, so I'm gonna write ten units. Um, so you can count the squares. What if you didn't have squares to count? How could you figure that out? If you know the coordinates, um, you can just add the, add the points. So I could also do 5 plus the absolute value of negative 5, correct? And I would get 10 units as well. All right, questions about this last 3C. Does it make sense? Okay. 
Um, all right, let's go ahead and go on to number four. It says point G has the same coordinates as point E, except its X coordinate has the opposite sign. So let's go find point E. So point E is here, sorry. Point E is here, and that is going to be negative five, three. And we are looking for the, everything is the same except for the X coordinate has the opposite sign. So what is our X coordinate gonna have? What's our X coordinate gonna have? A positive, so if this is a negative five, what is our, it's gonna be a positive five. So G is gonna be five, three. <coughs> All right, so let's go ahead and plot that point. It's getting a little busy over there, but we should still be able to, to do it. All right, so where's this point gonna go? Where's the point gonna go? Tell me how to get there, let me say it that way. Tell me how to get there. All right, Joe. So you're gonna go to the right five times, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna go up three times, okay. and then you get two G. So this is going to be five, three, and I apologize that I wrote four, three too big. Um, so from here to here is what we're looking at right now. All right, so the question says, how far away are G and E from the, X, or from the Y axis? So how far are they from here? How far are they, so how far is this point to here and this point to there? Elizabeth? 10 units. From the Y axis? No. Wait. Not from point to point, but from, from here. So how far from Y to E is it? Five. And then how far from Y to G is it? Five. All right, so they are five units. Sorry. Five units from, um, I totally wrote down. Sorry to interrupt this. Baseball and softball have been canceled for today. Baseball and softball have been canceled for today. All right, and then obviously, what is the distance between G and E? Ten units. What's one strategy that you can do? All right, or what's another strategy you can do? Alex? Since you already know that it's five away from the y axis, you can just do five plus five. Okay, so we did that one, but what's another strategy that you can do other than just adding them together? Gabby? Count the boxes. You can count the boxes. All right, and number five, it says point H has the same coordinates as point B, except it's both, except it's both? That doesn't sound right. It's both coordinates have the opposite sign. And which quadrant is point H? So point B is for negative three. And this is in what quadrant? Quadrant four. So we have opposite signs here for both of these. So what is our, what is H? What are the, the coordinates gonna look like? So what are the opposites of four and negative three? Negative four, positive three. All right, so negative four and a positive three. All right, so this is H. Let me write this right here so we know. So I'm just going to simply go over to my coordinate plane and I'm gonna graph it and I'm gonna put it on there and I'm gonna identify the, the quadrant. All right, so how do I get to negative four, three? How do I get there? So Ryan, how do I get to negative four, three? Wait, negative four, positive three? Mm -hmm. okay. So you have to go to the quadrant of three. How do I get, how do I get to this point on my graph? For negative four, positive three? I'm gonna go to the left four of three. This is H. So what quadrant does it fall in? Lily? Quadrant two. Quadrant two. And what do you notice about um, D and H? What do you notice about D and H? 
they are opposites. All right, let's go ahead and turn a page. So for this part, again, we're still finding the distance between points on, on a coordinate plane. Now, side note, if you have a coordinate plane and it's got the lines in the boxes, please count. Please count those boxes. That is almost the foolproof way to, to get the right distance from one point to the other. But again, if you don't, definitely this is a strategy that you can use. All right, so it says find the distance between each of the following pairs of points, so B and C. D and E, and D, um, B and C, D and B, and D and E. Um, don't go any further. So just label your points up here, like write the coordinates, and then write the distance, and then stand up. I'm gonna give you guys like three minutes for this. If you finish before, then that's fine. Go ahead and go over this. So, what is the distance from point B to point C? So, from B to C, what was our distance? Um, Lily. Hi. And Lily, what did you? How'd you figure that out? That works, and that's five units. 
All right. Um, what are what's the distance between D and B? So what's the distance between D and B? Bryson. So six and a half units. And how did you figure that out? Okay. So then we're just gonna add one and a half more to that one. All right. And then what are the what's the distance between D and E? Callie. Between D and E, you said nine units. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Well, technically, if I could do hops right, Let's try it again. One, two. So what did you do wrong there? Did you add them? Okay, and that's fine. And sometimes, guys, we, we're gonna make mistakes, right? We're still learning, so that's perfectly okay. Um, so it should be five units here. And again, if you have the boxes and you're, you're trying to use the coordinates, which I love, um, always just go back and double check. You know, have that option. Yes? No, it's five units, baby. It's five. Because you're from three and a half to from D. Uh -huh. So it's one and this is one and negative one and a half to negative four and a half, right? And this is three and a half. So one, two, three, four, five. And then you add the two halves. No, baby. You don't. No, you don't add it because you're not. Guys, don't get too critical. Like honestly, like don't don't start adding and subtracting and, not, and all the craziness. If it's if this is negative one and a half to negative four and a half, and this is three and a half to negative four and a half, yes. You are simply going from the three and a half to the four or the one and a half. That's it. Like, don't add halves or anything. Just just hop from one to the other. All right, um, which of the points are five units from negative one and a half, negative three and a half? <coughs> so we have negative one and a half is here, and then we're gonna go one, two, three and a half. So which one is five units from this one? Which one is five units from this one? W, point C, okay, is there, if I could, my point is not very good, is there another one, is there another one, could there be another one, because technically the point is supposed to be right there, Gabby? So C and A are actually five units from both of these. All right, which of the points are two units from half, negative four and a half? So half is here, and then negative four and a half is right there. So which one is two units from that? Okay. Just E, yes, it's just E because you're gonna go one, two. So you're going from, from this point right here to that point right there. And from that point to D, it's actually how many? Yeah. Yep. All right, and then five says plot a point that is both two and a half units from A and nine units from E and label that point M and write down its coordinates. All right, so find A. And we're going two and a half units from A and nine and a half units from E. Stand up when you have your point plotted.
All right, who would like to volunteer what they think the X coordinate is going to be? What do you think the X coordinate is going to be? What do you think, Addy? So your x coordinate is negative one and a half. All right, how many of you guys got that? All right, and then what is my y coordinate? What is my y coordinate? All right, Sophia, what do you think? Four and a half. How many of you guys got that? Negative one and a half, four and a half for your. All right. So teacher hat on for a minute. I feel like this lesson makes things confusing. Count your boxes if you have it. If you don't have boxes, look for the coordinate that is um, not the same. So like if you have a four and a negative four, look at that coordinate and find the distance by adding those. Okay? Um, this is not a hard thing. Just from one point to the other, finding a distance is not hard. All right, so now we're shifting over to lesson 15. On here it says, draw a figure in the coordinate plane with at least three points, or with at least three of the following properties. You have to have six vertices, you have to have one pair of parallel lines, and you have to have two sides with the same length. Okay? So you have to have six vertices, one pair of parallel lines, and two sides with the same length. Give me a second to think. Y'all John, and not me. All right, so again, you have to have six points. That's a vertice. You have to have six points, one parallel line, set of parallel lines, and two sides that have the same length. All right, go. I'm going to give you two minutes. I don't know why you're raising your hand. If you have time, answer number, um, what's it called? Number two.
Okay. It's okay if you're not done. Um, would anybody like to come up and share their picture? All right, Elizabeth. How many bird seeds does it have? Um, eight. So it said at least three. So. I don't know if the inner parts count. So if they don't, then that checks it off too. So I make sure that it's like. Oh, um, how many bird seeds does it have? Six. Does it say at least six or does it say six? Um, does she have her set of parallel lines? Yes. Does she have at least one right angle? Yes. And does she have two sides that are the same length? Yes. Yes. Three. What yes. two sides are the same length? Joe. The top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. Oh. Overachiever. All right. Um, can I get one more volunteer? Joe, come on. I made mine small so I have more space. I'm not sure if your mine is similar to Elizabeth's. I think it's an octagon. Okay. Um, it has eight vertices, but it has one pair of parallel sides, at least one right angle, and two sides with the same length. Where's the right angle? Triangle is a triangle. 
A polygon has five sides, right? No, stop. We're three. We are three. so far off that right now. We have one more activity to do. Uh, I'm done with this because this, this just is depressing. All right. Depression. So it says, here are the coordinates for four polygons. Four polygons. Hopefully we'll know what a polygon is by the end of this. Ah. Plot them on the coordinate plane. Connect the points in the order that they are listed. So do not go from this point to that point to this point to that point. If it's negative seven and four to negative eight, five, you need to go from that line to that line. Um, and label each polygon with its letter name. So this is polygon A, B, C, and D. You are going to be using four different colors just so that you can tell the difference between them. <laughs> All right, so the first one, polygon A. We are doing negative seven, four. So am I going to the left or to the right first? Whoa. Um, Abby. How many? Okay. And then what? So negative seven, four is going to be right here. All right. Next one, negative eight, five. Where am I going for that one? Negative eight, five. Gabby. Left, eight, and a five. All right, so the left, eight, a five. All right, so I'm gonna draw my line right there. All right, next one, negative eight, six. Where am I going there? Negative eight, six. Negative seven, seven. That's terrible. All right, uh, the next one is negative five, seven. How do I get there? Down five. Nope. Negative seven, seven. Left. Or negative five, seven. Next one is negative five, five. Andrew? Okay, and then the last one is negative seven, four. Spotting points, right? Okay. All right, so Gabby, start with the first one. Four, um, three. You go to right four up right. Okay. Next one. Um, three, three. Let's go, guys. I should have way more participation in this. Callie. Three, three. Huh? All right. Next one is two, two. For right two, up two. Next one is two one. Bryson. Right two open. Next one is three zero. Ben, where's three zero? to the right three and then you're staying on that line. All right, the next one is four zero. Four zero, Indira. Huh? Which direction? You said to the right? Okay. Um, next one is five one. 
Our next one is 5 2. Andrew? All right, and then the last one is there. This is B. All right, so C and D, we will have to do one during science, and then you'll have time for your cool downs today. All right, please do not lose this piece of paper. Uh, if, you, if you want, you can glue it in, or if you just want to fold it and put it in for now. Um, so this afternoon, when we finish it, it's a little bit easier to write on if you can. All right, and I go ahead and have this and get ready to go.